One of the great things about being an older woman today is we are likely going to live longer, much longer than previous generations. And because of that, we have learned to be very self-sufficient and independent. Many of us live alone and um, it's, it's, it's okay. A lot of people love that. But there can be times, especially like now, when we are having to be at home in some kind of isolation mode and not able to connect with the outside world, where the other things, anxiety and depressions, the Mental Health Association of America says that there are 2 million people in the US who suffer from depression. And there are probably a lot more who are in that kind of hidden depression mode where they're they're coping, doing fine to the world, but not doing so well to them with themselves. So I think that there's a lot of um, challenges with concentration and focus and and just feeling good about this beautiful life that we've been given. It's just sometimes tinted by fear and anxiety, and um, I think there's ways we can deal with it. So, what about games? Now, this is not so abstract as you would think. There are many different things you can do with gaming. I mean, of course, you can do just active, like playing games that you know you actually have already familiar with online. You maybe play poker or Scrabble or um, you know games online. There's lots and lots of choices. Crosswords, Sudoku. There's you know for fun. There's all kinds of games. But a study by the University of Georgia found um, that people, for example, in countries where they play mahjong, mahjong. I don't know. I no, don't play it myself, but if, they, if you play it, they have done de uh, scientific studies that show a de definite correlation with the reduction in depression and anxiety. And there's something. There's two things about that particular game: is that it's usually done in a group, um, you know, a group with group of people. But it's also, um, you know, mental stimulation for the brain. So those two things together, the social engagement and the brain activity, really, really help. And Oxy and me articles. So uh, why not take a look at our games section? So on the top of the website, you will see it just says games. And when you go there, you will see. Um, Mejong, you'll see crossword puzzles, Sudoku, strategy games, lots of word games, which I really like those, uh, you know, the word games where you find words and you match words. Really, really easy to play. Uh, chess, rummy, I'm looking at these lists here, checkers, backgammon. Um, I think you could even play Monopoly and Wheel of Fortune, but if you can't find those on that page, you'll find them, you know, on other sites. So many really cool games. And there are some sites where you can play with other people. And this is another thing that's so valuable. Number one, it gives you this feel good. It's, like, it's a feel good hormone that comes into your brain when it's like chemicals that are actually feel good chemicals when you play games. And secondly, you'll get some social engagement. And I think those two things are super, super important. So there, the ones that really score high with mental health, by the way, are chess, um, bridge, uh, backgammon, and, um, and rummy. I used to play that when I was younger. I don't even know if I remember how to do it now, but those are super easy to play. And on our 60ME website, you will find all these games to, to play free of charge. It's just an idea. So it's something that you might want to consider. And there's lots of other sites, of course, uh, as well. Now, the other thing you can do are video games. Now, video games are where, you know, you, you've got some sort of a role play or some sort of a, a challenge or a mission that you're trying to accomplish. And these are apps that you can find on your phone and other, other places. But the, um, the, the results from these kinds of games, and I know there's been a lot of discussion about how good they are for young people or not, and you can become very dependent on them. But if, you, if you're not into, you know, worried about that, and you know you've got your sort of priorities sorted out, just playing it is, and the studies have shown this, I'm not sure which one this one, in the article, by the way, that's by um, Joy, Joy Harmon, she mentions, um, sorry, Joy Stevenson, she mentions the uh, links to these research studies, which are super interesting. They are more effective, games, playing games is sometimes more effective than even taking antidepressants. Not that you should stop taking yours, I'm no medical advice, but the studies are there to show it does help, it really does. So. According to Joy, there are a few little guidelines here but with video games. One is that you choose one that you like. You know, don't force yourself to do something that you know you're not going to enjoy. And don't play it just because someone else is playing it or because you think it's something that's popular. Just play the ones that you like to play. And some of them are really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm personally not too familiar with all the different choices, but I know that my sons have both really enjoyed playing you know, video games and as a means of just relaxing just relaxing, getting their mind off of whatever the, the worry or something that's on their on their mind. And, you know, pick a variety of games. It's another tip from Joyce. Joy is don't just focus on one thing and get, you know, obsessed with it. 
um, Candy Crush, and I know some of these other ones are like totally, you know, uh, in quotes, addictive, or maybe even addictive. Uh, but those are ones that, um, you know, choose a variety, mix it up, go play some crossword puzzles one day and do some word games next day, do a strategy game the next day, and just mix it up for your, for your brain to get um, lots of different exposure. And try games that you can grow with. There's these, you know, the games that have levels, like where you do certain things and you achieve a level and you go to the next um, place. Those are great for your brain because your brain loves a challenge and it loves being, um, you know, pushed, pushed harder to, to go forward. It's really, really cool. And make use of all the games options. You know, make sure that you actually um, explore the game. Don't just, you know, think that, you know, if you're doing like a, one of those Rubik, those ones where they drop the cubes and you just, it's just fun to see them line up. Just see what else is there. What else, what's the next level? What's the next challenge? Challenge yourself. It's really fun. And finally, Joy mentioned something which she oh, she should mention in her, her line of business, but she's, she's, she deals in, in the medical field, but this is not medis, medical advice. Just watch your nutrition. I mean, that's just a given. And playing games is one way to manage depression, but make sure your brain is getting the nutrients that it needs. And those are things that we're all a little bit more familiar with now, perhaps that we've taken the time to learn about healthy aging and healthy living, but it's the omega-3 fatty acids, it's magnesium, which is one that has gotten a lot of um, attention, like in dark leafy greens and nuts. Um, you've got calcium that you need in dairy products and also in sardines and tofu. I didn't know that was uh, a source of, of calcium. Don't forget your fiber in your berries, like raspberries and berries. And those B vitamins, they're really important. Uh, you can get um, supplements, of course, but in all the, the foods, they're there. You know, like B1 is in oats, legumes. B9 is in uh, citrus fruits. I'm reading my notes here because I can't for a minute remember all these. But B12 is in chicken. And that's a really good one for aging um, the aging brain. B12, they say. Fish and dairy. Vitamin D, of course. Get out into the sun or take a, take a vitamin D supplement. And E is good for you too. That's in sunflower seeds and almonds. Those And, there, and so you don't need to buy supplements. You really just have to eat healthy food. And I think a lot of people during this uh, period of home confinement are actually finding a, a resurgence of, of uh, cooking at home and making healthy foods. And I think that's a, maybe one positive that in my life, certainly that's come out of this. So, so what are you doing currently to deal with a bit of loneliness or depression in your lives? Are you actually playing games? Are you a game person? Tell us what you play. Let me share with us what games you love. And maybe if you've shared, you could share if you have tried out the 60 and Me game section on our website. I'd love to know what you find useful there. But, you know, there's so many things you can do. Um, playing games just might help you uh, as a boomer in this time of, uh, you know, of taking care of yourself to, to find some outlets a little bit more relaxed maybe than trying to learn another language. All that is good for you too. <laughs> but games are fun. And if you don't take them all that seriously, they might just uh, help you to ride out this storm with a little bit of a smile on your face and, um, and feeling a bit more relaxed. So tell us what you're watching, what you play, what games you love, and we can share with each other and um, hold hands together through this. So stay safe and, and calm, stay strong. It's going to be okay. And we'll talk again soon. Bye-bye for now.